You may not know this, but a man will pursue you and treat you directly proportionately to a few key decisions he quietly makes about you. And the problem is without understanding what these decisions are, you're probably wasting a lot of time on things that make no difference in his decision-making criteria or worse, are lowering your chances. So today I'm revealing in the clearest way possible what these five decisions are so you can make more empowered choices, stop wasting your time and get the guy you want. I'm gonna shoot it to you straight and share things with you today that can make a massive impact on your ability to stop experiencing pain with men. If you're someone who's being breadcrumbed, if you're someone who typically goes all in into a relationship and then finds out she's with the wrong guy, or maybe you connect with someone really quickly and then the guy loses interest. If you feel like your picker of men is broken, then this video will be powerful. Why? Because guys make decisions sometimes not even knowing how they're making decisions. So the tools I'm going to empower you with right now will give you an advantage even over the way the guy understands himself. Because some of the things he's doing are subconscious in nature. And if you have a better grasp of how he's deciding things than he does himself, then not only can you see things before they happen, but you can move away if the guy isn't the right guy for you and you can stop doing things that you may have done in the past without knowing it are lowering your chances of connecting with a guy. Now, some of the things I'll be sharing with you right now, I'm not excited about. I'm just the messenger. Some of these things might feel a little bit like a double standard because they are but you want to understand the world as it is versus as the way you wish it were. And based on that, make more empowered decisions. The first decision a guy is making about you that will determine how he chooses you, how he pursues you, he may be unaware of it is, do I feel more alive in your presence? Think about it this way. Most women put so much energy and effort into their physical appearance, into appearing sexier and, and trying to mold themselves into a different version of themselves that's imposed by society. And society also means men, right? <laughs> Some women, but started by guys, this absurd standard. Now, if you are in this camp and you've been having a hard time thinking you're not attractive enough, you're not beautiful enough, I'm here to say that is not true. A guy is not necessarily thinking, is she the hottest woman I've ever met? Granted, if you were naturally gifted with a DNA that the 0.01% of women is gifted with, well, you'll have some short-term advantage. It's not going to last forever, number one. And two, it may be unsustainable, but you might have some initial advantage with guys. But for the rest of us who weren't gifted with this amazing DNA, beauty-wise in the traditional sense, then he is looking to feel more alive. His heart wants to feel a bit more full as a result of connecting with you. And you may not have a lot of control over your physical appearance, but you have a lot of control and influence over the way you show up. And the way you show up means how connected are you to your life force? How expressive in terms of your meaning and the things that make you joyful and the things that make you unique and different? Can you express those in clear, unrestricted ways so he gets the punch in the gut, in the heart that he needs to wake up? When he connects with you and he feels more alive, that is the beginning of him being interested in pursuing you, him paying attention, him not thinking of you as a friend, but a potential partner, the less of those qualities and the qualities of aliveness you bring to the table, the more you'll have to struggle to prove yourself in ways that may not be good for you. Number two, decision that all guys make at some level, some guys more than others, but here it goes. Is she a fling or the real deal? And here's the difference. A fling is someone that feels exciting and attractive and even hot and good for a cool moment, but not the person I'm going to introduce to my mother, not the person that I want to invest time and energy in a way where we can build a life together. What determines this? Well, how easy it is for him to connect with you in ways that require typically more investment. If you're the type of woman who, because you're connected to yourself and because you want to be open, you have less boundaries in terms of physical connection. If you let yourself go with the way you feel in the moment and say, well, it feels great, so I'll have sex with them, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not going to land you the long-term relationship you want for the most part. Are there exceptions to this rule? Yes. For the majority of us and the majority of you, if you connect with a guy physically more intensely, quickly, or sexually, he will not put you into the box of someone for long-term. He's 
far more likely to put you in the box of someone I can have fun with right now, but don't really have to commit to. Is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it a double standard? Absolutely. But it works this way right now. So if you want to not try to mold the world to your way of being, but act in accordance to the way it is right now and play it to your advantage, then delay the physical connection with them and definitely delay the sexual connection with them and understand that if he knows he has to work for it, he's going to much more likely than not put you into the category of someone who he can invest long term with. The third decision they make, and this is not something they think in these terms, they just feel it. Few guys are asking themselves, is she feminine enough? No, but they're actually sensing, does she feel open to me? Does she feel connected to her feelings? Is she expressive of her light? Is she someone who is sensual? And sensual is not sexy. Sensual is connected to her senses. The more intuitive you can be, the more present in your emotions, the more clear, unfiltered you are in terms of what you feel is what you let out in healthy ways, obviously, the more polarity that will exist in the connection with them. Now, the term femininity this day and age has been bastardized in many ways, so I'm not going to go into a monologue about that. Suffice it to say that I'm not asking you to be submissive. I'm not asking you to not make decisions. I'm only asking you if you want to up your chances gigantically to be more present in your body, to feel more connected to your emotions, to be more clear about what's really going on, not just here, but here, to be able to hold space in such a way that you have both the mind and the heart acting in unison. The more that happens, the more coherence there is between brain and heart, the better decisions you'll make, the more he'll find you irresistible. It's just the way it works. Now, before I share my last two decisions that you don't want to miss out on, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, more than 30 countries to get the commitment they want from men and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and a report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you've been on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the fourth decision they're making, and again, not with his words, they're just calibrating what's going on and putting you in a different box than they would otherwise, is does she know herself to be high value? Not is she high value. You're intrinsically high value regardless of how you show up. But do you know it? And do you show up in ways that express that you understand that you're high value? And that means do you understand what you value and do you have boundaries to express those values in ways that the guy can't step over? You're not necessarily molding like a chameleon to his needs. You are open and at the same time, you're someone who draws a line in the sand and says, here's what I need to move forward or I cannot do this right now or this will happen only if or this will never happen. When you're clear about that, when you have the capacity to say, this is something so important to me that I'm willing to risk this guy going away from my life, regardless of how awesome I think he is. If this guy can respect this boundary, which is healthy, which is kind, then I'm not in it. The more clear you are with that, the more you'll show him, A, what are the guidelines through which he can continue pursuing you? And B, how to be a better man and show up for yourself in ways that maybe he wouldn't have if he didn't have these boundaries. And number three, that you value yourself. The more you do this, the more he'll understand she's someone I can build a life with. She's someone I'll feel proud to be with. She's someone that not any idiot can get. It takes someone with special character, special connection of his heart to get her heart. And the more you show yourself to be this way, not playing games, just being who you are, the more he'll value you more, the more he'll step up to the plate. If he's someone who wants a serious relationship versus just a situationship. The fifth decision he's making is, does she need me in her life? Now, this is a really important one because this speaks to, are you someone who is fiercely independent in such a way that you've told yourself, whether it's true or not, it's a different story, that you don't need anyone, that you can go your entire life without a guy and life is cool. Now, I'm not saying life would not be cool. My question to you is, if you intrinsically feel like your life would be the same with a guy and without him, please don't go for a relationship. Here's why, because it's going to be a lot more painful. <laughs> There's going to be a lot more contention, more decisions to make, more compromises, some sacrifices even to make. So unless you feel like your life 
which can already be great. I'm not saying it can be, can be greater with him in your life. If you feel that way, then show it. If you feel that way, allow him to add value to your life. Allow him to know that even though you have greatness on your own and you are willing to walk away if he's not the right guy for you, that you know that one plus one is more than two. That you understand that in this lifetime, there's going to be an exponentially more juicy existence with the right partner than on your own. If you are that way, then express it. Now, I'm going to share a bonus one because this is one that I call the deal breaker of all deal breakers. You can have a few of the other ones, but if this one isn't the way it needs to be, you will lose him quickly or you will lose him eventually. And that is the decision he's making is, is she a drama seeker? Now, that's a loaded word. I'll explain it in simpler terms. Is she passive aggressive? Is she someone who's secretly hoping for me to read her mind and reserving the right to get pissed if the mind reading isn't correct? Is she someone who shows up in a way that's entitled? Is she someone who is aggressive in ways that are not cool for me? Is she coming up with problems without even thinking of the solution? Is she putting the weight of the challenges in her life on mine without doing the same thing for me? The more you show up with creating problems and drama without it needing to be so, the less clear you are about your needs and the more you act in ways that just punch him indirectly without him even understanding what's going on, the more he'll put you into the category of high maintenance or drama seeker and no one wants a human being like that. You wouldn't stand for a guy like that. He's definitely not gonna stand for a woman that way, especially a guy who has things going on for himself. The last thing he wants is someone who's gonna suck the energy and life force out of him. Now, here's the thing. That doesn't mean you don't have problems. That doesn't mean you don't have needs. It just means the way you express them is conscious and clear and self-aware. Hope this is useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and help my channel if you click like and subscribe. If you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, you can watch the next video right here. Share this video with someone who needs to hear this, please.